It's Batman and Catwoman versus the Justice League as Ivy takes over the world. What's up, everybody? I'm Stan, and welcome to Detail Comics, where we go over comics in detail. This is an irate review where I go over a comic book, its story, its art, give you my impressions, and let you know whether it's something you should go back to the comic book shop for or not. Make sure you subscribe to get more of these every single week. The book that I want to talk about right now is Batman number 42, where we see the continuation of the Everyone Loves Ivy arc. She's taken over the world with these kind of spores and various other things, and Batman and Catwoman have to figure out how she did it and how they can win. So Batman's, of course, got a plan, but can he put it into practice with the Justice League watching over him? Let's dive in and see what can do. One of the most interesting concepts to come out of Everyone Loves Ivy Part 1 in Batman number 41 was the idea that is she going to be controlling all of these individuals at once or is she just going to be exerting some sort of influence? And we finally get the answer in Batman number 42. So when we open up the book, we see Superman basically patrolling Wayne Manor as a lot of really kind of, you know, Stepford style contents really being put out there. Everybody's just like, hey, it's another day of peace and prosperity while Batman and Catwoman hop into the Batmobile and take off. Of course, Superman's still patrolling the skies, watching them as they they go. They go and do some pretty normal things. They head to Batburger, where everybody seems to know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Nobody's on the streets. Nobody's really doing anything. It's just Batman and Catwoman in this very isolated, you know, like everybody's gone up rapture style environment with Superman watching overhead. They head out into the suburbs of Gotham and then come across a house. And what we've had is, you know, Catwoman has been just kind of relaying this information like, hey, who should we have come to our wedding? How about Ivy? Who should be your best man? How about Ivy? Why don't we have my, my bride? Maids. Oh, those should all be Ivy too. Let's just invite Ivy to everything because Ivy's here. Of course, as they arrive in this kind of suburban area, Batman's just like, hey, come close. I've got something to tell you. As he whispers into her ear, I love you, and then starts to whistle because this is our first indication that Ivy is controlling these individuals, not necessarily the, you know, just exerting an influence over them and then still having their own mental capacity, their own mental faculties. Because if you were Superman, you would know how much you should intensify your super superhuman hearing so that that way you couldn't be disabled by a single whistle from Batman. This is her lack of understanding, her lack of control, her lack of insight into when and how things should operate. She has taken over these individuals and she is puppeteering the entire 7.6 billion person population of the world, which means that she can only exert influence over a certain number of people at once, which is probably why the streets are so empty, so barren. Only the people that are necessary for the presentation of peace and prosperity are necessary. Uh, this is a really interesting piece that kind of popped up into this, and overall there's another conversation they hop into. They go to head into this house, and the flashes are about to be there, and Catwoman takes them all out with a flurry of blows, leaving Wally West, Barry Allen, and young Wally West devastated and incapacitated on the floor, because evidently Catwoman is such a badass that she can completely wreck the flashes just based on anticipation. They bust into the house the, you know, Ivy is controlling this old lady that's sitting there and then there's multiple people that are headed to intercept Batman. You know if you got two Green Lanterns, you got Wonder Woman and the person that he's looking for is not there. And while Batman has exercised this intimidation tactic before in an earlier issue of Batman, it seems that Ivy is relaying that same kind of intensity to Batman and Catwoman and the whole fear in the heart of, uh, of everything isn't necessarily something that she seems to be grasping. And what we see is Batman unraveling what was Poison Ivy's plan, where essentially she has been letting everybody eat all these salads and, and everything kind of like that because she has the ability to control plants and she's been controlling these people using the plants that are currently inside their system. Except for this one gentleman, Johnny Suntress, who is a severe allergy to greens and hasn't been eating any of those kind of plants, so she's not exactly sure where he is and Batman's been hunting those people down. Of course, this is kind of a, a furious, enraging thing for, for Ivy. She doesn't necessarily know where this is, and since she's controlling Superman, it's leading to a, a pretty intense conversation. You know, we're on the brink. Fires, destructions, devastation, starvation, all of these things. She saved the planet. She saved the world, and now everyone loves Ivy. But this just put her over the edge, and just Superman smashes in Bruce's face. Just like, completely crushes him, you know, like devastates his eye socket, it's knocked out his teeth, he's just blood all over his face. It looks like half of his face is probably bent in, and it turns out that he was dead. She killed Batman, and then brought him back using magic, science, surgery. There's somebody for everything inside this situation, which is leading Catwoman to have this conversation. They used to know who they were, and then while Bruce is kind of recovering with his patch over his eye, you know, brought back from the dead, you get this situation where this conversation is going some places, where Catwoman 
Corbin used to know who she was, but Poison Ivy insinuates that, you know, the War of Jokes and Riddles, that was a very different time. That was a very different person. She was young. She was scared. She brought this kind of influence. And then she thought she had control, but she didn't. And she just complete. she killed tons of people inside the park. And now there's retribution. She's making up for those mistakes of the past by controlling and bringing peace to the world. She's not afraid. She doesn't need to show off. She has control. She is control of everything and she can be redeemed. And the person that's taking care of Bruce at the same point in time, which is kind of interesting, is that there's one person that has several PhDs and is a doctor. And it turns out that it's Harley Quinn. So how is Harley going to be playing a really serious role inside this Poison Ivy story? I know that inside the Harley Quinn book, there's a, a kind of a relationship between Harley and Ivy. But how is that going to impact and influence Tom King's take on Bruce Wayne and Batman and Catwoman? And how is everything really going to kind of pan out when it comes to this particular story? We've only got about one issue left. I'll have to double check the solicitations to see what kind of other storylines we have coming up. But we need to resolve the conflict of Ivy and how she's controlling everyone and how she's controlling everything. I can't fault any of the art. Mikhail Janin has done a fantastic job and overall his portrayal of Batman and Catwoman is great. His Superman's pretty solid too. And then, you know, you got Wonder Woman and the Green Lanterns and the hanging off the building. The scope and scale of his setup is great. As far as the writing, there are... It's pretty traditional Tom King, relatively sparse pages that are kind of punctuated with the art style, and then a little bit of witty banter and dialogue that's going through everything. It seems like he relies heavily on the story being told in the art, and then accentuating it with the dialogue and the conversation. But that, again, is very standard Tom King. Overall, it continues my interest in Everyone Loves Ivy as a story arc, and I think that it's a pretty strong one that's going to be moving forward, but I want to know what you guys think, too, so hit me up in the comments down below, and we can start that conversation. As always, if you like what you see, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to get more news, reviews, and commentary on comic books, comic book movies, comic book TV shows and games, and anything and everything having to do with the world of comics.